We've looked at sequences before, but we're going to look at a little bit more today. So we know that um, that the terms of a sequence are written as a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, and our nth term is going to be written as a sub n. Okay. Um, the nth term of the entire sequence is notated with curly brackets normally. So the curly bracket a sub n means the nth term of the sequence. A sequence is monotonic if it is only increasing or only decreasing. Okay, so the values are going up or the values are going down. Um, a sequence is bounded if it is if the every term is between two values, basically, the n being the lower bound and the m being in the upper bound. So we're going to take a look at that right now. Let's list the first three terms so that we can practice, and then we're going to figure out if these sequences are monotonic and or bounded, okay? All right, so the first one, the nth term of A is equal to one over N. So to figure out A sub one, we would just plug in one for N. So one over one is one. A sub two would be one over N would be two. So one half. And A sub three is equal to one over three. Okay, so I like to list them. So one, one half, one third. And then they would continue like, you know, one fourth, one fifth. And I noticed that the values in the sequence are monotonic because they are decreasing. And they are also bounded because the highest value is one and the lowest value we are approaching zero. So this func this sequence is monotonic, monotonic and bounded. It's between zero and one. All right, second example. So b sub one is equal to one squared. Actually, I'm just gonna write them as a list. B sub one is one squared over one plus one is two, okay, which gives me one half. Okay, b sub two is two squared over two plus one, which gives me four over three. And b sub three is three squared over three plus one, which gives me nine over four. So the sequence is um, monotonic. Because it is increasing, but it is not bounded. The it is gonna basically increase without bound. Oops, not bounded. Okay, so it can increase, but then not have a cap on the top. Okay. All right, so c sub n would be c sub one is negative one to the one. C sub two would be negative one squared. C sub three is negative one cubed. So we evaluate that to be negative one, one, and negative one. So this sequence is not monotonic because it's just oscillating. It's going back and forth from negative one to one. But it's bounded. And it's bounded between negative one and one. Okay, so the next thing about a sequence that we we are finding out is that we can tell if a sequence converges or diverges, which means just that if it converges, it's going to a value. And if it diverges, either then it's like either increasing without bounds or um, yeah, it's increasing without bounds, basically, or it oscillates so that it doesn't it doesn't um, it doesn't approach a value. Okay, so the way we can figure this out is if the limit of your sequence approaches a value, then it converges. If it does not, 
or reaches infinity, then it diverges. Okay, so converge to a value, diverge not to a value. Okay, so we're gonna figure out whether this these sequences converge or diverge, and what value they uh, converge or diverge to. So we will start with we test for a sequence for convergence and divergence. We test the limit as we're looking at the nth term as it goes to infinity. So we do the limit of a sub n. And in this case, that would be the limit as n approaches infinity of 3 plus negative 1 to the nth power. Okay. So we go ahead and we plug in, we substitute infinity basically. So I get 3 plus negative 1 to the infinity does not exist because infinity to the negative 1, negative 1 to the infinity just swaps back and forth. So this function is either switching between 4 or 2. So this sequence is not a function. The sequence diverges. Okay. All right, let's try the next one. So this is the limit as n approaches infinity of n over 1 minus 2n. Okay, so we can go ahead and just substitute in infinity to infinity. Okay, and what I notice is that the degree of the top is the same as the degree of the bottom. We both have n to the first power. So this is like an each DC rule. We're really looking at, does the numerator or the denominator increase faster? They increase kind of at the same speed. So we go ahead and we just divide out, we're gonna look at the leading terms and we're gonna divide out the infinities to give us the coefficient of one over two. Negative one over two because the two is negative, okay? So the limit as n approaches infinity is gonna be negative one over two. So we end up with the sequence converges to negative one half. All right, so we have the limit as n approaches infinity of n squared over 2n minus 1. So we're going to see if this sequence converges. What happens is that I get infinity squared over um, 2 to the infinity minus 1. OK, so the last problem, we could have done this as well. We basically get infinity over infinity, which means that we can apply L'Hopital. So we can do the limit as n approaches infinity of the derivative of the top, which is 2n, over um, the derivative of the bottom, which is 2n to the n, which is ln of 2 times 2 to the n. Okay, And then I'm going to direct substitute in the infinity, giving me 2 times infinity, which is infinity, over 2 to the infinity, which is infinity. So let's low be tall again. I get the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 over the ln of 2 times the ln of 2 times 2 to the n. So I get 2 over infinity, which basically gives me 0. OK, I could have just looked at the beginning here and been like, OK, so um, infinity, so I have a quadratic over an exponential who increases faster? Um, the bottom increases way faster, so this is a Bobo situation. The, we're bigger on bottom, we're gonna approach zero. Okay, so I get that the series, sorry, the sequence converges to zero. It's going to a value. Okay. All right, so we have the next one, which is the limit as n approaches 
infinity of the ln of n over n. And so looking at this one right away, I'm like, okay, ln of n loses to the linear function because a log increases really slow. Linear functions increase faster than a log. So I know this is going to be a Bobo situation. The limit is going to approach zero. But just in case, let's go ahead and direct substitute. The ln of infinity over infinity, which is infinity over infinity, we will low be tall. So the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over the derivative of ln of n is 1 over n over 1, which gives me 1 over infinity, basically, just 1 over infinity, which is 0, which approaches 0. What do we knew from before? So the series, the sequence converges to zero. All right, I gotta pause this and I'll come back in a few. Okay, number five, we have the limit as n approaches infinity of n, fact, n plus one factorial over n factorial. Okay, let's remember that n plus one factorial is basically one times two times three times four times times n minus one times n times n plus one. And n factorial is just one times two times three times four times times n minus one times n. So everything is gonna cancel out except for that n plus one. That's fun. Okay, so we can write that as the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 times n factorial over n factorial. Okay, so this up here, this is my n factorial times the one extra factor of n plus 1. So I get the limit as n approaches infinity of just n plus one because the n factorials are going to cancel. So I end up with infinity basically plus one, which is infinity. So the sequence, I keep wanting to say series, but the sequence diverges because we go to infinity and not a defined value. All right, so this one, the limit, as n approaches infinity of the nth term, which is n plus 1 factorial over n plus 3 factorial. And what we learned from the last problem is that we can write the factorials as looks like the denominator's factorial has two extra terms. So I can write that as the top is n plus 1 factorial over um n plus one factorial times n plus two times n plus three. Okay, so everything after n plus one basically can uh, stays, but everything before that cancels. So I end up with the limit as n approaches infinity of one over my two extra factors, so n plus two times n plus three. And when I substitute that in, look, the bottom is a lot faster, is increasing a lot faster than the numerator. In fact, the numerator is not increasing at all. So I end up with one over infinity, which gives me zero. So the, the sequence converges to zero. Okay, last problem. So we have just some regular some properties about sequences that we're I'm just gonna state them. They're they're kind of intuitive. So if we have the limit as n goes to an infinity of a sub n and it equals L, and then the limit of as n goes to infinity of b sub n and it equals k, 
Well, then the limit of the two sequences added or subtracted together gives me the limits added or subtracted together. And then the operations work for every single operation. Like if I multiply the two sequences together, then the limit will be L times K will be the two limits multiplied together. Okay. Same with the, if we divide the sequences together, just we have to be careful that the denominator can't equal zero. Okay. And then if we multiply by a constant, that the limit will be the limit times the constant. Um, we can also write this this one here as the c times the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is equal to c times l. Okay, so we can pull the constant out to the front if we want. Okay, so there's one more rule about sequences that says if the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n, if that is equal to zero, then the limit of the sequence is also equal to zero. So this is like if we have a function that is oscillating, but it's getting close to zero, then yes, it's oscillating, it's switching back and forth, but we can see that that switching back and forth is getting closer and closer to zero, okay? So we have the first five terms of a sequence and we have to write this now, finding our a sub n, so the rule for a sub n, and this can be tricky. So I just, I'm gonna look at the numerator's numbers first, okay? So this is two, the sequence of the numerator is negative two, 8, negative 26, 80, and negative 242. And you have to remember that this is a sub 1, so we're substituting in 1 for n, okay? Something I notice is that, um, is that the sign changes, so I have a negative and then a positive, a negative and positive. So with that, I have a, I'm multiplying by a negative 1 somewhere. And then because the first term is, is negative, then I'm gonna want an odd number for my degree. So odd powers will give me negative, even powers will give me a positive. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I can see that this is basically all these values, I tried a bunch of different things, but all these values are just like, one value off from a cube. So all we're doing here is saying three to the n power. So three to the one minus one to give me two. And then I'm multiplying by the negative. Okay, the bottoms, that's it. That's it for the top. The denominator is the pattern of one, then one times two, then one times two times three, then one times two times three times four, then one times two times three times four times five. I recognize this one, two, six, 24 as n factorial, okay? So a sub n will equal n factorial on the bottom, and then the top is negative one to the n power times three to the n minus one. Okay, so that is the um, that is the value of a sub n. So now I can figure out what a sub 6 would be. So I just substitute in negative 1 to the 6 times 3 to the 6 minus 1 over 6 factorial. So I get a positive, and then 3 to the 6 is um, 729 minus 1 over six factorial, which is 720. Okay, there's a factorial button. Oops. There's a factorial button in your calculator and it is math. Then you press, you scroll to probability and then you press number four for the factorial, okay? So the sixth term would be a positive 728 over 720. I'm not gonna go ahead and 
simplify it since none of the rest of these are simplified. And now it's going to ask me if it converges or diverges. So I can use the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth term. But because, because the sequence oscillates, I'm going to try this as see if the absolute value of the nth term will go to zero. And if it goes to zero, then the sequence diverges. Okay. If it doesn't go to zero, sorry. Let me look. Sorry. One again. If it goes to zero, then the sequence converges to zero. Anything other than that, we don't really know. Okay. So that, that's it. We can only test at zero. Okay. So I have the limit as n approaches infinity of negative 1 to the n times 3 to the n minus 1, so using my nth term, times n factorial. Okay, so I'm going to try and substitute in my infinity. So I get negative the absolute value of negative 1 to the infinity of 3 to the infinity minus 1 over infinity factorial. Okay, this, it, we're going to switch back. In, the negative 1 switches us back and forth, yes. So, but we know that um, with the absolute value that that negative one is going to be a positive, okay? So next, we're gonna look at who wins. Who increases faster, the numerator or the denominator? So just so you can imagine this, three to the power of infinity would be like three times three times three times three times three, and it keeps going on for non. Um, infinity factorial is like 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7 times 8 times 9. Who wins? Well, this multiple, they are both multiplying, but the denominator's numbers are going to multiply by a bigger, a larger and a larger and a larger and a larger number. So the denominator is going to win. Okay. So n factorial increases faster than an exponential. We have a new winner in the house. Okay. So basically, because the bottom um, increases faster, we have Bobo. Three to the infinity. We're evaluating three to the infinity over infinity factorial because the minus one really doesn't do anything. So this is going to approach zero. So because the absolute value of the nth term approaches zero. The series, the sequence converges to zero. And that's it for today.